άρχισε η Οδύσσια μου. Ο γουλιάδος μου, ο Ερίκος ο Σεβίλιας, ο οποίος ήταν στο Auschwitz, με τον... πέθανε με τον αριθμό. Ερίκος Σεβίλιας από την Αθήνα. So we didn't get too much sleep and we used to just get out real early in the morning because in the barracks it was just crying and screaming and praying and it wasn't unusual that a prisoner who was laying next to you to go to sleep when you woke up they were dead. In any of these camps, everything is so the same day in and day out, that when anything unique happens that is not on the schedule, you always immediately try to talk about it. Is this good news or bad news? One morning we came out and the first thing we saw was that there are no guards in the guard towers. So we are sneaking between the barracks towards the gate and lo and behold, nobody's there. So we get enough courage to go to the gate and we notice there's a heavy chain with a padlock on it and it's a very, very foggy morning and we are just dumbfounded. All of a sudden there's a break in the fog, like a mirage, and all you see is two horses with a horseman. As he's coming closer, one of the Polish kids says to me, look at his hat, and it was a red star. A Russian soldier, he comes to the gate and he says, I'm advanced guard, nobody can leave the camp because there are all sorts of diseases, you're full of lice and you haven't been washing for months. But he says, as he takes out his gun, shoots up the padlock, doctors will be coming, medication will be coming, food will be coming very shortly. So the three of us, as fast as our skinny legs can carry us, we go to every barrack in the vicinity, open up the door in every language that we know, just yell in, we are free, we are free. And you'll never forget that moment, the sounds from the barracks. Those who are able to walk out to the sunlight, walk out. Those who can't walk are crawling out. I have to pass through a little area where there are little bungalows. And this is where the SS families were staying. And they must have left in a big hurry because I go into one of the bungalows and I open up the closet, the clothing in there. Open up the pantry, food. And then I go into the bathroom and I turn on the water, hot water, fluffy towels, shampoo, soap, I haven't seen for a year. I make a little victory dance on my prison uniform, get in there and take my first hot shower in a year. It's wonderful. Jack H. Taylor, U.S. Navy, from Hollywood, California. Believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever been in the movies. I've been working overseas in occupied countries in the Balkans for 18 months. In October 44, I was the first Allied officer to drop into Austria. I was captured December 1st by the Gestapo, severely beaten, 
uh, even though I was in uniform, severely beaten and, and considered as a non-prisoner of war. I was taken to Vienna prison where I was held for four months. When the Russians neared Vienna, I was taken to this Mauthausen concentration lager, an extermination camp, the worst in Germany, where we have been starving and, and beaten and killed. Uh, fortunately, my turn hadn't come. Uh, two American officers, at least, have been executed here. Here is the insignia of one, a U.S. naval officer. Here is his dog tag. Here is the army officer, executed by gas in this locker. Uh, How many ways did he execute? Five or six ways, by gas, by shooting, by beating, that is, beating with clubs, uh, by exposure, that is, standing out in the snow naked for 48 hours and having cold water thrown, them, thrown on them in the middle of winter, starvation, dogs, and pushing over a 100-foot cliff. This, this is all true, has been seen, and is now being recorded. You got that uniform you have on. This uniform, uh, I came here in uniform, but it was taken away from me, and this was substituted with my number in USA. I have been condemned to death as another American, uh, also in this camp, but fortunately the 11th Armored Division has come through and saved us in time. משטרת הגטו היה להם מטה. אני יודע אני באיזה צורה נכנסתי לתוך החצר. אני לא אתבייש להגיד. חיטטתי בפחי אשמה. מצאתי חצי כיכר לחם, עובש. היה לי מעיל. אמרתי, אני ארוץ הביתה. ואני בא הביתה. אבא, נפוח. מרעב, כנראה הגוף שלא מקבל את הנוזלים ואת הגודל, התנפח, לא יכולת להכיר אותו. ושלושת החיות שכבות אין עונים. ואני זעקתי, יכול ברויט, יש לי לחם. המחשבה על זה שאתה יכול לאכול לחם לשובע, היה רק איזושהי פנטזיה, איזשהו חלום בהקיץ. ואז אני זוכר... הבית שלנו, 
כבר התחיל להיות חוגן, ואני התקרבתי, אני רואה שאבא שלי מורדים את אבא. קדיש. מורדים את אבא. For salvation, קדיש. כולו, נפוח. For redemption, קדיש. ואני עוד חיסיתי אותו עם כמה נתונים מהרוב. ואמרתי קדיש. For all the Holocaust victims. הכאב הכי גדול שאני סבלתי במחנות זה רעב. זה מעביר אותך על דעתך. זה כאב היום. אתה חושב על אוכל. אתה מוכן גם לקחת מחברך. לא רוצה להשתמש במילה לגנוב. זה מלחמת קיום נוראה. כדי להשתיק את הכאב הזה, ושאתה לא יכול להשתיק אותו. נגד כל הדברים אתה יכול למצוא, איך אומרים ב- ביידיש, שתיקה לך. פה שם תרמית כזו, תרמית אחרת, נגד רעב לא. והרעב הוא... הוא הכניע. נלחמת רגע אחרי רגע, באופן בלתי מודע, לחיות. למה? כי אדם רוצה לחיות.